that would be uh, the best way to get approved to be on campus today. Okay. I mean, this is a, a state-owned university. Uh, absolutely. Okay. So it's, it's our understanding, according to judges of any previous ruling, that free speech law applies here. And so we don't have to go through a permit process. I mean, I'm glad to get money. Maybe they're giving out cards? Yeah. Yeah, the cards that say that homosexuals should be cast into a lake of fire. What I need Bible today is until you are... You know, my dad's a little old minister. Okay, until so am I. I've grown up in the church. I spent my entire life there. What does the Bible say? The Bible says love everyone. So that you can be, God sends people to hell, though, right? Registered through the, conference. the Bible says love everyone. Love your neighbor. Ever does, heard of that? Does God send people to hell? That's the biggest rule. Does God send people to hell? Who says, who does God think hell? that you should be taking students, literal college students, some of whom are already struggling, so and treating them like I'm shit? The no. no. Preach truth. You, truth of God's word. For the record, I already called campus to police to you, on you. Okay. Whatever. To the campus area. Anyone so what I am going to ask is for you all That's not very loving. to politely leave today, reach, so, out, to so we, reach out to conferences, um, get the approval, and then you can come back to campus. Because once again, I welcome anyone and anyone's thoughts. Um, it's a healthy discussion. Don't need no approval. matter if you agree or not agree, I want to know. But I also want to do it the right way to make sure you that- You are the audio and visual report, just so you're aware of it. Absolutely. Yeah, so we don't need approval, sir. Constitution is our approval. Yes. For for this purpose, yes, no, you sir. do. No, for freedom so, of and freedom of speech. So, Art, so right now, I'm asking you nicely, to fill out the appropriate paperwork to be able to come on campus and be on public uh, public sidewalks, not on any grassy areas or areas like this. You are allowed to be on these areas um, of you know cement paved sidewalks. That is what's public to everyone. Actually, everything's public, sir. It's you public. Have, you just public have campus. to go through conference displays. That's what I'm asking you. All right. So if if we do not, you're asking us to leave. If we do not leave are we liable for trespassing or arrest i mean what so that is not law. that is not for me to say my okay. job is to ask you politely to leave okay. peacefully and so that we can go through the steps to make sure that when you do are allowed to come back it's done appropriately if you do not listen to me i will then have to make some phone calls and have some people help me in figuring this out so, so just just so you understand our position so the constitution I and, a, and a first sir, amendment all due respect it is not my job to get in, in okay. into the well, constitution then, with you, you. I I'm, just, I'm just i'm just i'm just stating our position sir that's all i'm doing no, I'm not, not I, trying to get an argument no 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 I, I, appreciate, I appreciate i appreciate that i get can i finish it, but for right now can i finish sir go ahead and finish. yeah so the constitution of the united states first amendment allows me freedom lives in a free piece on public property this is all public property including the grass including the witches, where all the students are. I can go to the same place they're going. I'm not going in buildings. I'm not disturbing your classrooms. I'm not going to a dorm room, disturbing their sleep or where they're living. It's all public forum, traditional public forum. Just like a public sidewalk out there, I do not need your permission to be here, sir. In fact, if I wasn't passing these out or someone didn't call you, you wouldn't even care we were here. You wouldn't have said a word to us. Well, isn't that right? Yes and okay. no. Okay, so right? that- No, hold on. If we, no one knew you were here, no one would report it, but the second students report it, saying that they feel uncomfortable, that's impeding the right of our, the daily activities of our students, and okay. that's what's actually so violating So the issue is uncomfortable. And okay. a federal judge okay. has already ruled that uncomfort or disagreement does not thwart yeah. free that's, speech. You know what, and, and you know what? your authorities, we'll talk to them when we get here. We have every right to be here, uh, and you're actually violating our civil rights today. Uh, so. You know what? Freedom of speech is not freedom of, of popular speech, freedom of unpopular speech. That's the whole I, point of freedom of speech. Call, I will call campus police then, just so you know. Okay, go, yeah, go I mean, for if it. they would like my information, so they we'll talk to them. That's fine. I have no That's fine. No, and, and like I said, I, I'm just... And who are you, sir? Hold on a second. I think you're a sodomite. Wow. But hey, listen, I was going to so tell you. Even preaching this time. I walked around this way. There's a bus stop right there. Yeah. And there's like 50 to 60 students there. Just waiting for a bus. Okay. And I asked the guy, I said, well, how often is the bus coming? He says, about every 30 minutes. So you get quite a crowd for like 30 minutes. So it's like, a, and there's like a little median thing too. Like a public sidewalk's right there. Yeah. But there's a little median thing too in the middle. You could actually preach from there across one lane of traffic to them too. Okay. Well, uh, if they make us leave, we'll just go down there. You haven't even started preaching, huh? No. No, I, actually, I was just sitting here on the bench. So some student was uncomfortable with uh, Completely unconstitutional. We, we made them feel uncomfortable, so now we, we need to, that's what I was going to report. But anyways, we're supposed to register with this Congress of something. No, thanks. I'll pass. Mm -hmm.
I passed that almost 200 tracks already. Yeah, I passed out a lot of tracks. They're actually very receptive here. I mean, I, I'd say I was at about... Until they read it. And about 75% were taking it off the tracks. I'd say probably 90% took mine. Yeah, initially it was 90, but then it started to go down. So. Yeah. <clears throat> For a while I was hitting 100%. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Every person took it, then finally I got rejected. Yeah. <laughs> so. Mine's probably 80, 90 percent. <clears throat> I've talked to the police here six years ago. He said I had every right to be here. He's out of the mouth. Times have stuff. changed, though, brother. The Constitution is invalid now. It's an old dusty document. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. But it's things like Tuscaloosa that are bringing this down even more. <clears throat> it's happening all over the place, man. Yeah. It really is. How can you be uncomfortable because somebody walked up and said, Hey, sir, how you doing? like one of these. I mean, that's all I've done. Um, they don't like the message. Yeah, I haven't had a conversation with anybody. Just that's not tracks. No, I've had nobody conflict with all. And I had somebody come over and ask me. So they like one for their friend, too. So, so he's checking with, I think, their law enforcement to see whether they can run us off. So, we'll see what happens. How you doing today, miss? Good. 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 Did you want me to stay here? Otherwise, I'm gonna go talk to the go to the bus stop. Doesn't matter to me. Would you like me to stay here for the interaction? Yeah, let's just see what happens. Okay. How are you folks doing today? They're trying to kick us off campus. Yeah, I speech. saw what happened. You guys, yeah. are, did you have to get registered? Uh, so, technically, we're a club on campus. Or we're oh, like, okay. club on campus, so, like, I'm the only one who actually goes to school here. Uh, but, yeah. So, it's part of the club thing. Yeah. Well, see, this is happening in America. Which is, America, which is also have, super weird. USM's pretty good about it because it's a public school. So, technically, yeah. you guys have the right to actually exactly. be here. Exactly. Exactly. But they're, they're, um, it's happening all across America. We've almost gotten kicked off. Uh, yeah. you, we've gotten caught in UNE campus before because it's private. Private, privates are different, but this is a public school. But this school. is a public school. Like, we have a lot of different people who come. So, like, this, this is different. You can't so, they're actually really telling us that if the students are uncomfortable with this, we can't have permission to yeah. get The other yeah, thing, it, I think it's... Speech, so. Yeah, and I think, um... Yeah, I think the thing with you and me, and I don't know if it's the same with public schools other than, like, private schools, is, like, the soliciting. So, they got, we got in trouble because we were asking specific questions of, like, like religious questions, specific questions, stuff like that. So yeah, that's I mean, why we got in trouble, yeah. so that was like a considered soliciting. Yeah. It's a private so, school, so they can exactly. carry on. Um, so. Exactly. And so we. But if you got a city sidewalk we'll near it, you can typically go there. Yeah. So, so. It's, it's. I don't. I've never had a problem here at USM, so it's actually really interesting. But when you have yeah, it's, some it's really uh, uh, aggressive students who just don't want to be here, it's definitely hard. Um, so we haven't even started to preach. Usually when they preach, it's a little more confrontational. Um, yeah. Let me see what happens. So uh, Portland PD will be arriving shortly. I just want to let you all know and give you some updates. You know, I've, I've obviously talked to uh, USMPD. I've also talked to the uh, vice provost and the director of conferences. And everyone's in agreement that no matter what, you still need to get approved to be here. And although there are you have a lot of rights when it comes to legislations and constitution 
there are things that are different, different, and I'm not going to get into everything because I don't know all the policies specifically. There are things that are different when it comes to a college campus, no matter if it's public or private. And I, I'm just sharing this with you so that, one, we don't run into this again, or if you do go to other schools, just know that there may be a few extra steps to take, right? I just, I just want to make sure it's easy for you also, you know what I mean? So, well, we have attorneys that when we're stopped, we just handle things. So. I'm sorry? So we have attorneys that handle things when we're stopped in our free speech. And, oh, and, and that's fine. It usually costs us full hundreds of thousands of dollars. We don't get any of it. But if that's the route they want to go and prevent our free speech, then they There's just, there's just so, like, like I said, uh, our only option is to just don't do our job and just do what we do. And exercise caution. And, and, and absolutely. And I, one, I agree with, with free speech and everything. I'm, all I'm saying is that's kind of like those are the steps we need to take to make sure that you are getting the correct free speech on campus. Let me just take this and I'll be right back. You should know what he's talking about. Completely ignorant. I have a feeling. Well, well, I think I need to run this out with the PD and just see where things are going to go. Um, so he called the, the Portland PD, not the USM yeah, PD. The Portland the PD, PD are coming. The and the Portland PD just do whatever he tells them to do. So because they're going to look at this as like private property, which it isn't. So. It's like in every campus situation over there. It's bad news. Just more infringement chiseling away at it. Yep. I mean, I've been preaching on Kyle's campus by as long as he's been alive. So I know what my rights are. How long? Almost as long as he's been alive. Oh. I'm assuming he's like early 20s. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't know what he's telling the PD. We're disturbing students. Doesn't matter what he tells them. We'll, we'll, we'll reason with them the same way we reason with them. We'll see if they listen or not. And listen, obviously, if, if, if it's not like a sergeant or, or a supervisor and they start getting crazy, we need to act on the supervisor first before we start, you know, get into it then. Some guys who are young cops, they don't know what they're talking about. They get all emotional and they get all power, power hungry. Why were you asked to leave campus, do you know? Did they ask you to leave campus? Some student oh. disagreed basically with, with our approach or what we, we didn't even preach, all we did was cast out. The, the thing is you can't approach the students. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. It is true. No, ma'am, it's not true. We, we're this is America. This is China. And that's what we're doing. I can Excuse me? Paper. Yes, ma'am. This is America. I understand that. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech. I understand you that, but you people. also can't approach students. Where is, where is, what law says that? Free speech. That's what the free speech Our policy. campus policy is you cannot approach students. Well, that's an unconstitutional policy. What's, what's the verdict? Where are we at with this? Police is on the right. Um, I just got off the phone with uh, the vice president uh, of the University of Student Affairs, Dominic, and uh, he's, he's getting making sure the police are coming to figure everything out but like I said all we need to do is check off a few things go to the department of services get approved beyond campus make sure we know all know the do's and don'ts of what we can and cannot do on the college campus and then we can easily come back right like like I said from the beginning not saying you can't be here at all together you can't be here right now you can't just because it's not approved to the university I think that's the biggest thing today so, so you're denying free speech to citizens of US I am not no Okay, we need approval, it is. Yeah. Our approval is the Constitution. That's our approval. It's fine. You know what? I, I, I think at this point, uh, we'll talk to them there, there's definitely uh, a disconnect in what is allowed and not allowed, and that's fine. It's okay to disagree. But when the either campus police or Portland police, I don't know which one will be here first, 
when they come here, we'll figure everything out. But I just want to let you know, in the meantime, I just ask respectfully, let's not interact with any of our students until they come. Well, I'm not going to guarantee that. We're going to do free speech. I'm not going to guarantee that, sir. I was here six years ago. I'm not going to muzzle me. Campus police officers that we have every right to be here doing that. And that was it, six years ago. So you know what? In six years, a lot, a lot has changed, and I, I, I can't confirm that. What uh, it's conversation video. happened? We got the whole thing on video it's the last fine. time I was here. So. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, we're going to continue doing free speech. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not violating the law. Uh, if you're telling me I'm violating the law. Is that your camera right there? It is my camera. It's observing me, so when I preach, I'm ready to go. I'm wearing one right here on my chest. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, so everything's on video. Everything you say, everything you That's That's fine. I feel comfortable being on camera. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's okay to record. Uh, it's part of the First Amendment, right? Absolutely. So, absolutely. Right, and that's totally fine. Uh, but yeah, Campus Police will be here in a second. It's either Campus Police or... What, what is your name, uh, by the way? What's that? What is your name? My name is David. What was your name, Miss? Sherry. Sherry. And what's your position here, sir? Like, what's your what's your authority here? What's that? What's your position here on the university? Uh, I am a staff member on campus here. Of of what? I'm a staff member on here. Oh, like, what's your official position? Oh, uh, student engagement leadership. So I work with our students here on campus. We are a drug support for them. We're an advocate for them. We're a resource for them. Not right now, I don't. What's that? It's a gospel track. But Jesus dying for you on the cross. Oh, thanks for that. You're welcome. Yeah. Excuse me, did you get one? You're welcome. Hello. Did you get one? Yes. Have a great day. How are you? Good, how are you? Great. How are you doing? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Did you get one? Have a good day. So a student came and complained that I'm wearing a video camera and I'm recording. So this guy gets emotionally fired up at me and tells me that now you've caused a problem with our students. You, you're, you're, and I don't know all that he said, but basically he's trying to make a mole out of a mountain. Just because oh. I'm wearing, well, the I mean, was upset that I'm wearing a camera. That's part of our First Amendment right. Yes, sir. We have a right to video what we do. Right. It's very sad. Excuse me. Do you get one? It's a gospel track. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Have a good day. How's it going, man? Something for you to read. All right. Have a good day. Sure, it's taking them a long time to get here, huh? Well, the car just pulled up. Police car just pulled down there. Oh, okay. I'm gonna keep walking. Now he's going the other direction. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Is that them coming to get you, bro? They're coming to get us. Take us to the right. No, it's you, man. I just want to get mad. 
I'll, I'll bail you out. I'll come and get you. I, see. I, see. I went in jail not too long ago. Your turn. 18 hours, was it? Yeah. How you doing today, sir? Well, from the time of arrest to the time of release. I got about 30 minutes of sleep at that time, too. They didn't give you any opportunity to leave? No. No, there was no signature bond. It was all I had to get paid to get out. And it cost me $1,300 no. to get out. No, I mean that they didn't say, well, if you don't leave, then you're going to be arrested. They didn't. Give you no, they told me that. Okay. It was public property. I see. And God let me to stand my ground. So I stood my ground. That's what you need to do. I preached that spot, that same exact spot, like 12 times. Had an encounter with the Braves officials one other time. I stood on the ground that time, they backed down. Cops told me to go there the first time I went there. So, same old stuff, you know. So you got a mad homosexual at you today. Yeah, but no amount of kicking and screaming and throwing a fist gun chance is truth, God's word. So she can throw a fit all she wants. The society has promoted that idea that if you throw a fit large, you know, loud enough and long enough, society will change and collapse to your your wishes. Uh, not me. Mm -hmm. It's been a while, for sure. So now it's... How you doing, officer? Good, how you guys doing? Doing wonderful. Nice to meet you today. You as well, I'm Anthony Stewart, Fort PD. How you doing? Reverend Rodney Keister. Nice to meet you, sir. Kerrigan yeah. Skelly. Nice to meet you. How you doing? We are being uh, audio and video recorded. Same, same as well. So I guess we're all recording. Yeah. So the reason why they called us was because um, they obviously probably told you that they don't want you here. Right. Um, I know the Constitution, you guys feel you have a right here. I work with Portland PD. Sure. So they have their own. PD here, USMPD. Yeah. They yeah. haven't responded yet. Yeah. They're asking if you guys would just move off campus. Yes, sir. I'm just asking the same. If you don't, I'm not forcing you to. Okay. That's just yeah. the only. That's the only thing I'm here to ask. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, you know, you're doing your thing. I'm not here to interrupt. Yes, sir. But USM police shows up. Sure. They've got the school. I guess has their own policy. Yeah. We're willing to. We were like constitutional right. Yeah. We're gonna leave you guys alone. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen once the USM police shows up. We understand. Okay. Yeah. And we've so, asked in front of we're violating some law. Right. Or we're trespassing, yeah. then you let us know. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to leave. Okay. You know, but if we're not violating the law, we have every right to be here. We're not violating the law. As far I mean, as I'm think concerned, we are, but, but. as far as I'm concerned, you're not yes, violating sir. the law. It might be policy of the school. Yes, However, sir. they're going to handle that. They're going to handle it. I just came up to kind of ask, maybe Thank said, you. I appreciate you moving along, but it's up to you. So, so yeah, we're lawful we're law abiding citizens. Yeah. We don't want to cause trouble. Speech, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what we're fine with me. Do. Thank you, sir. Perfect. Appreciate it. We appreciate you. you stuck around because uh, it's not always law enforcement on a campus. So. Yeah, I, I get that. And they're, you know, they're saying that some of the students don't feel safe. And, well, it's, it's, the students can move away if they don't feel safe. That's, that's exactly that, right. That was my response to them. Right. Um, but and we haven't forced anything. We just give them. They can say no, and we walk away. That's yeah. We do some preaching. You know, we've been I don't. To do some preaching. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, yes, sir. They have their policy, mm -hmm. and we're gonna let them handle it the way. Of course, if their policy is unconstitutional, they might have some some issues. Hey, uh, it's, you're probably right about that. Yes, right? sir. So I'm not gonna argue that. Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Appreciate, Appreciate it, sir. Yeah. Have a good day. Okay. Oh, praise God. Let's pray for the. They did the right thing. Yeah, you did. Well, the fact the fact that they showed up first, though, brother. They don't want to deal with this. Yeah. yeah. I think we should just go ahead and preach. Yeah, go for it. Let's pray for him first. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, dear Jesus, for we thank you for intervening with the Portland police. We ask you that you would be a minus Lord if the university please show up today. Lord, that you would move on their hearts, that they would realize that they're wrongs, and Lord, that you would give us the liberty to make stuff to in Jesus Christ, holy and wonderful and righteous name. Amen. 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 Preach. It's your floor, brother. My floor. <coughs> you want me? It's gospel track. What? It's a gospel track about Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, loves you. He loves you so much that he willing to go to the cross. How's it going, man? Hey, so free to read. 
gospel track. About Jesus. I'm sorry? It's a gospel track about Jesus. A gospel track? Yeah. I'm free to read. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Have a good day, man. You too. Thank you. Yeah. Lord God, very plainly. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. He knows that he was manifested in Jesus. Jesus was manifested. Jesus was manifested to take away our sin. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. And today, friends, if you're in sin, you're not in a right relationship with God. And his desire is for you to be in a right relationship with him. Uh, he's not willing that any would perish. His love for you is so great that he's not willing that any one of us would perish, but that every one of us would come to know Jesus Christ as our Savior. You can know Jesus as your Savior. You can know that every one of your sins is forgiven. That everything is cleansed through God. That your heart has been set free. And that's what God can do for you. And his desire is that you would be set free. I continue reading in 1 John chapter 3. It goes on to say, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, but whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. Warns us, don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anyone deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for a seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. So, if you're born of God, that means you're pardoned. I got one. Too. Okay, great. If you're still struggling in sin, then you need to be saved. And Jesus wants to save you. He's made a way for you to be saved. He's made a way for you to be forgiven. He's made a way that your sin could be redeemed. But you don't need to continue in the body of sin. You know, every one of us has said, I've sinned, I've fallen short of the glory of God. But God has changed my life. He's changed my life. I'm not the same person I used to be because He's forgiven me. He's changed me. He's transformed me. And that's what Jesus Christ can do for each and every one of you. He's able to save you. He's able to save the administrators that work here, the staff that work here, and every student. His love for you is, is beyond comprehension. Even though that we've sinned against God, His love for you is so great that He's not willing that any one of you would perish. His love for you is that great, but there's a difference between how great His love is to save you and abiding in His love. Now, many people make that terrible mistake of, oh, well, God loves me, therefore, He loves me, He wouldn't allow me to go to hell. But the reality is that each and every one of us, if we're not saved, if we don't come to have a saving relationship with God, the Bible is very clear that there is a place of eternal suffering, and that's not God's will. God's not willing that any would perish, is what He said in His word. He's not willing that any one of us would perish. But His utmost desire is that we would be forgiven, that we would be transformed, that we would be changed. And God loves you so much that He made a way. How is it that we can be changed? Well, it's real simple. If you get any of our gospel tracks, have a good day. Thank you. Always the message of salvation there. But three simple points. Three simple points. Confess, repent, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shall be saved. Uh, those three things are very simple. Confess, repent, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shall be saved. Now let's talk about confession. That's when we tell God about our sins. We don't go and tell some person. We don't tell some minister. We don't tell a priest. But we tell God. We tell Him all about our sins. We admit those. We confess. We, we acknowledge that we've sinned against God. And then repentance is the willingness to, that you're so sorry that you're willing to turn to Him. Are you so sorry for your sins that you're willing to turn to them forever? Jesus Christ can help us to confess and repent of our sins and to be set free. Would you be set free by the power of God? And then the, and the last of those three things, and I, I put this one at the end because it's not a matter of believing that He exists, but we need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's putting your full faith and heart in the work that Jesus did, that you could be forgiven, that you could be set free. And Jesus is able to set you free. He's able to deliver you. He's able to change you. He's able to transform you. Because of His love for you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Sure I believe in him, should 
not perish but have everlasting life. Now, the Bible tells us that all sin will separate us from God, no matter what that sin is, whether it's fornication, homosexuality, uh, immorality, lying, stealing, cheating, Thank you. Lord, Welcome. Vain, uh, all those are types of sin. Many of us have failed in one point or another in those areas. We've failed in one of those areas or another. More than likely, you failed in many of those areas, especially the one about keeping God first. That's failed kind of continuously. Uh, taking the Lord's name in vain is probably not a person on campus that has at least once taken the Lord's name in vain. And uh, you see, if we've sinned against God, sin separates us from God. That's why we need Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, to save you the world. He is able to forgive us, he is able to transform our lives, and we will confess and repent of our sin. We can be saved. So how about it, folks? Is anybody here you're interested in being saved? You're not sure where you're at. You know where you're going to spend eternity. Your heart's not made right with God. You're not going to make it with God. God loves you, and He's made a way for you to be saved. He's made a way for you to be redeemed. The Bible says that there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. And sometimes we can think about the way that we're going, and it's right to think of what we've chosen. But you know, just because we think something's right doesn't make it right. It's got to be based on God's Word. It's right by God's Word. What is right by His? What is the way to God according to Some free read, man? You can yeah. know the way. You can know the way you can know Jesus as your Savior. He loves you. He'd love to talk to anybody. If anybody's interested and wants to know about, more about salvation, there's plenty of literature to share with each and every one of you if you have interest. And I want you to know that God truly loves you. He loves the staff members here. He wants them to repent and confess their sins. He loves every student. He wants them to confess their sins. Thanks. Welcome. God loves you. He's made a way for you to be redeemed. He's made a way for you to be forgiven. He's made a way for you to be set free. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that his or believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When you experience everlasting life, you can. You know that every one of us is going to live forever. We're going to live forever with God in heaven. We're going to live forever in a place of torment, a place that's never-ending. The smoke arises up. It's never-ending. Jesus Christ is saved. He can transform. He can be able to deliver. For God so loved the world that he goes. Well, you can think what you want. One day you'll stand with God. You'll stand there and you'll give an account for your life. He loves you. And he's giving you time to repent. He's giving you time to know Jesus. Time for you to be saved. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. The Bible says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. The Bible has much to say about sin, about judgment, about hell. And I encourage you to open up a Bible, to read it, and to obey it. If you don't have a physical Bible, most of you have a small computer in your pocket called a smartphone, go to BibleGateway.com, read and heed. The Bible says, repent therefore and be converted, that your sins might be blotted out, that times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. So God is willing to pardon you of your sins, to cleanse you of your sins, to convert you from a sinner into a saint, not a Roman Catholic saint, but a biblical saint, a Christian, He's willing to change you and transform you. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 3 said this, except a man be born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. It's not optional. There is no other way. Jesus Christ is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. No deceit's found in his mouth. He is the truth. And Jesus Christ, the truth, says you must be born again. Now, what does that look like? 
For the Bible says, if you confess and forsake your sins, you shall find mercy. Jesus Christ said, unless you come to him like a little child, you'll by no means enter the kingdom of God. So you must repent of your sins, turn from your sins, believe the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and put your childlike, humble faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do that, God will see your repentance, your humble faith, and he will respond by putting his spirit within you. He will change you from the inside out. He'll make you the Bible called a new creature in Christ. The Bible said if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All the old things that passed away, beyond all, has become new. That happened to me over 25 years ago, at the age of 19, in my bedroom by myself, wasn't in a church service. I knew I was a sinner in need of a savior. I knew I was a sinner deserving of God's judgment. But in a moment in time, God, who was omnipresent, touched my heart and changed me from the inside out. The same thing God has done for me, he can do for you. But you got to humble yourself. The Bible said God resists the proud. God is against the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. And the thing about grace is the Bible says it is by grace you are saved through faith. So it's not of yourself, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the grace of God is the only way to receive forgiveness of sins, cleansing of sins, pardon of sin, to the grace of God. And God will only give his grace to those who humble themselves. The Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Don't let your pride lead to your downfall. Get rid of your pride. Get rid of all your sin. Lest it be your damnation in the end. The Bible says, do you not know? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. That's found in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And then it says this in verse 11 about those who became Christians. And such were, past tense, some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And that's what God seeks for you. Your justification, your sanctification to wash you of all your sins, to cleanse you of all your sins, to make you new. That's God's desire for you. The Bible says God does not delight in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn and live. The Bible says God is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes. So why Jesus and why the Bible, right? There are so many people in so many books. Why is it that this person in this book is what you should base the light your life off of? Also, why not Muhammad? Why not uh, the Quran, right? Why, why not all these other religious texts and their prophets? I'm just yeah. curious why Jesus and your Bible is different than all of this other books, prophets. Good question. Not. Good question. So Jesus Christ said that I am the way. I don't want you to yell at me. I am. I'm Just preaching. I'm preaching. I'm not here to talk to you. I'm here to preach. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way. What's the point? I am the truth. Are you trying to convert? I am the light. You don't That's a very definite statement. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about that. He's not one of the ways. He's not one of the truth. Not one of the lights. The way. The truth. The light. 
And no man comes to the Father but by him. He's the only way to eternal life. In fact, eternal life, by Jesus' own definition, is to know God the Father and the one he has sent. That is eternal life. Having a relationship with the Father, having a relationship with the Son, that is eternal life. So God offers you eternal life. But if you're in your sin still, you have no relationship with God. God is separated from sinners. God calls sinners to repentance. God calls sinners to faith. He calls sinners to himself, to the blood-stained cross of Calvary where Jesus died for your sins. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we can be healed all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon Jesus the iniquity of us all. So the Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. The Bible says, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient to the washing power of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for you, can wash away every sin, can cleanse you of every sin, can transform you and release you and free you from every sin and release you from the bondage of the sin you're in. That's God's offer to you. But your sin leaves a stain upon your life that you cannot remove by going to church, by good works, by praying prayers, by being baptized, by being a member at a certain church. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says, and he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. And that's the whole point of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that you stop living for yourself. They you start living for the one who died for you on the cross. And Jesus said, if you, if you want to come after me, if you want to follow me, you must take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses life for my sake and the gospels, Jesus said, shall save it. And what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul in the end? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Then Jesus said this, if you are ashamed of me and my words, it is adulterous and sinful generation of you, the Son of Man, will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. What would you say, young man? I'm ashamed of you. Okay, well, I was talking about Jesus. Those are his words. I was quoting Jesus' words. That's in front of Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 38. It's the word of Jesus. Why, why are you ashamed of me, though? You hate people. I don't hate anybody. No, I love everybody. Every sinner needs to change. What's your greatest sin? What's that? What's your greatest sin? What's my greatest sin? Yeah. Well, I don't know if we can rate sins like that. Uh, the Bible said if you break one part of the law, you're guilty of breaking the whole law. So every sin makes you worthy of God's judgment. Every sin will exclude you from God's kingdom. And that's why God calls all men everywhere to repent. You know to give up your sin. You know Jesus Christ said, go you know and sin no more. 
That's why you're wearing. That's what God said. The go and sin no more. That's his command to you. He wasn't joking around. He wasn't saying go and sin some more. Sin all you like and you're okay with me. But go and sin no more. That's why you've got cameras on. You come here. You know people are going to disagree with you. You're making problems. Here you go. This is what you got. You got people disagreeing with you? I thought everybody looked enough like the stereotype of what you're against. Oh, you don't want me to speak in your area. Interesting. <laughs> And the Bible says that mockers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust. Mockers come in the last days walking according to their own lust. You can mock the gospel. You can mock Jesus Christ. You can mock his servants who spread his word. But you do it to your own detriment. You understand that? It's like you're drowning in the Atlantic Ocean and the Coast Guard comes along and throws you a life preserver and you mock the Coast Guard, you mock the life preserver, you mock the boat, you mock the ocean that's going to kill you, you mock the sharks that are surrounding you. That's what it's like to mock the salvation of Jesus Christ. The Bible says no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved except Jesus Christ. He's the only way. No other way is going to help you. No other way offer you deliverance from your sin. Whether I'm changing your mind or not is irrelevant. Because God calls me to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So whether you change your mind or not is irrelevant. You have a free will given to you by God. You prove that every time you sin. If it was God's will, if you're doing God's will, you'd never sin. Never, ever. I don't think you know what harassment is. Harassment is not you standing here listening to me, young lady. No one's making you stand there. No one's got you chained down at the ankle. This is called freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Welcome to America. Learn some constitutional law. We can yell right over your voice. You can try. Won't bother me. I tried to have a good conversation you. I tried to converse with you. You started yelling in my face. Ignored what I had to say. Yeah. Actually, what is the purpose of all of this? Actually, I was answering what you said. But no, you, you weren't. You, you want me to talk to you only. You are here to preach. That's that right. was your answer. I was preaching the answer. You didn't like that, so you walked away. Because I'm trying to talk with you. Listen, I don't need you screaming in my face. Listen, throwing a tan tan temper tantrum is not going to help you I'm any. I'm not doing that. I'm trying okay? to override your voice right now. If you can't be heard. By throwing a temper nobody tantrum. Nobody can hear you. By throwing a temper tantrum, right? I don't know. It sounds like what you're saying isn't based in any facts. It's kind of stupid. It's all based upon so God's word. Kind of temper tantrum. God's word is true. Is it? Yes. You're basing it off of a book. Why is this book any more correct than any other book? So what are you basing your beliefs off of? I don't have beliefs based off of anything. Is that a belief? No, you have beliefs I, then. Dude, I, 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 I don't have beliefs. It is a belief. That's your belief. Where are you basing it upon, young man? Yourself? I'm when did you begin? 19 years ago? Belief. Why do you have to base stuff off of a book that was written 2,000 years ago? It makes zero sense. So if a book was written a long time ago, it, it's not reliable? No, no, no. no not trustworthy? It, no, it means that you should take it with a grain of salt and not base your entire life morals on that book. So where do you get your morals from, young man? Where do you get your morals from? Life, man. Life. My okay, so, so if you say a certain thing is wrong and someone says it's right, who's right? You or them? You have a talk about it. You discuss it. You come to a reasonable conclusion because we are modern humans. But what if you disagree? Who's right? Why does somebody always have to be freaking right, dude? Why is that? That's what thing? you're talking about right now. How do I know I'm right? I, I'm, what I'm saying is that you don't. So why are you out here preaching as if it is fact? So you're saying that I don't have to prove I'm right. To be right, you don't have to. You don't have to prove your right to be. I don't know what. Dude, so, so what, what's your what's your problem then? What I'm saying is that if you don't have to be right or wrong, right? You can have an opinion. That so then, what's the problem? Proof like that. So what's the problem then? The problem if I don't have to be right or wrong, what's your problem with the me? The problem is that you're yelling. That's the problem. No, the Bible is Bible. You're yelling stuff. That you're yelling just stuff. I I can't Who yell. Who around here was yelling? I stuff. can't yell what I believe. It's just kind of annoying. Then yeah. walk away. Yes. Walk away from our. Area? Look at we have benches. Go to college. Yeah, this is our. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a taxpayer. I'm allowed to be here, just like you are. Okay, we understand that, but that doesn't mean that we, as taxpayers, can't disagree. Disagree all you like. Okay, that's what we're doing. I don't have a problem disagreeing with me. 
And look what, this entire time you haven't been preaching, so I've kind of accomplished my goal. Actually, I've been teaching lots of things in this little bit of time. I'm gonna about logic and reason. I'm going to see you later. Yeah. Hey, girl, let's, to be. let's pull apart the Good job. Let's bring Good together. job. Come on, let's do this. So when it comes to truth, truth is absolute. Okay, so let's start with the Whether you believe in it or not. Let's start down there. Truth go. is not an opinion. There is no your truth and my truth. There's only the truth. What's it? Jesus. It's a person. He said, I am the truth. And all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge is found in Jesus Christ. Then you're a liar. That's simple. You're a liar. Yep. I'll probably put it on YouTube eventually. Absolutely not. Public property. Walk away if you want to. I'm glad you can sleep at night. I can sleep just fine. I have the peace of God. The peace that passed understanding. I have my sins forgiven. I've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. So I have the peace of God, but there is no peace with God for the ungodly. If you still have sin in your life, there is no peace for you. But God is calling you to forsake all your sins, that you might come to the Lord Jesus Christ and have that peace that he offers you. That peace is only found in being in Jesus Christ and having your sins forgiven and being made right with God and having a right relation with the God of the universe, the God who created you in his image. He gave you free will, but he's telling you to use your free will rightly to surrender to him, to submit to him. He's the only way. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. The Bible says the Father has given him the name above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Yep. Uh, it doesn't matter if I feel wanted or not. So when it comes to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, I go into all the world. I don't go where people already are Christians. That would defeat the purpose, right? Like fishing in a bathtub. I go to those who are not Christians to tell them the truth. Now, whether they're receptive to it or not makes no difference to me. That's your choice. Your free will given to you by God to choose to follow the Word of God and obey Jesus Christ and do whatever you want to do instead. Now, you have the choice to that, but you don't have the choice and the consequences now. You understand that? So you choose what you want in this life. God gives you the ability to do that, but you don't get to choose the consequences in the end on Judgment Day. All right? So I'm not here to preach to the choir. I'm here to preach to those who don't like it, who don't want it. I was there. Listen, I mean, I was there. I didn't want to hear this when I was your age. But the Lord Jesus Christ changed me, and now I preach his word for the glory of God. Nothing. I wasn't religious, didn't go to church. You're preaching to people, some of us might already be religious, right? What does that mean? I'm just saying, like, people have changed, right? Okay, well, you have the right to preach your message anywhere you want to. Right, right, but I'm saying, like, you know, like, you think Jesus is right, I think Muhammad's right. What's your defense versus Jesus versus Muhammad? Okay, well, we can talk about it if you want to. So anytime you're comparing two different religions, you do an internal critique of that religion to see if it matches up to itself. Okay, so for example, the Quran says, if you have confusion about what is written in this book, go to the people of the book, which are Jews and Christians. Okay? Now, if you go to the Jews and Christians, they're going to contradict your book, the Quran. For example, your book says... I don't have the sir. I have it on a, on a pamphlet if you want to read it. I'll give you one. Very positive. Well, it could mean other people that are in Muslim faith, right? No, it doesn't mean that at all. So Here's two. Who are you to interpret the message of Muslims Muhammad? say the same thing. Yeah. Yes, really. Okay, well, I'm Muslim. Okay. And like, well, I, I'm not, I've never heard just be, that. Just before. because you've never heard or you don't know doesn't mean it's not true, though, right? Right. And I'm just saying. So like, I would encourage you to read those. I've got the surahs in there. Where's the one? Both of them. Right here. Both of them have it. You can go to this one first if you want. This one has the one we're sure, yeah. talking about. Mm hmm. You start reading right there. I'm going to keep on preaching while you read that, okay? Which one is it that you're talking about? Right here. Start reading right there. So when it comes to, when it comes to the Bible... The text is in Arabic, right? Yeah, hold on a second. You, re you read that if you like. I feel like we're having a conversation. No, I'm, I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. You're not going to stop me from preaching. No, okay? no, of course yeah, not. Yes, so I'm going to preach. I just want to make sure this is constructive. Like, like, read it right there, man. All you have French needs right there. Well, this is information from someone who's trying to convert other people. Do you read Arabic? I can. Do you read Arabic fluently? Yeah. So you, you read the Quran in Arabic? 
Yeah, I can. Yeah. Do do Basically you? Yes. Or do you read it in English instead? No. What read do you read in Arabic? You, everybody, everybody's a Muslim reads it in Arabic. Everybody. Say anybody who can, they can read it. In but Arabic. what if they can't? And they read it in or like for so example, language, right? Afghanistan. So there's there's Farsi. Quran okay. And stuff. Or Hindi. So right? I'm just asking. So what you, what does that mean though? So that means that they can't know the word of God. They can't know God, Allah's word. You're not listening to what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, you're you're someone coming from the source of someone who's trying to be anti. Is not necessarily anti. But let me when did I say that? You asked me a question. I answered. I it. just said I'm not necessarily. So let me finish what I'm saying before you interject. I'd appreciate that because I want you. Finish I'm gonna get back to preaching. Well, yeah, so when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ here, though, and what He commands of you, what He commands of you, He says very absolute things, like I am the way, definite article. I am the truth, definite oracle. I am the way, definite oracle. There's no other way to the Father but by me. So Jesus Christ, when it comes to what he said, either he's telling the truth, he's lying, or he thinks he's telling you, but he's actually a lunatic. So either Lord, liar, or lunatic. But Jesus Christ, with the Bible's testimony about him is that he never lied. Even the Quran, which calls him Isa, says that prophets can't lie. So if Jesus said that he lied, he's disqualified from being a prophet of Islam. And was he a lunatic? Was this man really a lunatic? Was he crazy? Was he out of his mind? When someone reads the Bible, is that what they get from Jesus Christ? This is a man who laid down his life, and wicked men beat him and bruised him and crucified him. He turned the other cheek. He preached the truth to people. He healed people. He raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He gave hearing to the deaf. Made the, lay, the mute man speak. Made the lame man walk. Is that a lunatic? No. It's a man who has miracles, who has the power of God on his side. And if that's true, that is really who he says he is, Lord. If he really is Lord, now you have a conundrum if you're a sinner because you're not submitting to him as Lord right now. And you need to. Praise the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We have, a, we have a voting coming up soon. People vote for Republican, Democrat, whoever they, independent. I'm here to tell you, the only one that can change this world is Jesus Christ. No politician, no Democrat, no Republican, no independent can change this world. In fact, I submit to you, that most of them are hypocrites and corrupt. But Jesus Christ was never voted in. He can't be impeached. No corruption involved in his appointment as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he loved you at the cross. He proved his love towards you. Wasn't just lip, lips coming out, words coming out of his lips. Wasn't just lip service or a tongue wagging in the, in the wind. He actually proved his love for you. And the Bible says God demonstrates his own love toward us. Now, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I just got a question. Because, like, what I was hearing just kind of sounds like we aren't able to do anything for ourselves. We need Jesus to, like, that and, like, that and that speak from a better place. But what's the point of doing anything? Woo! Yeah! Woo! Hi. Hi. Can we, can you guys talk to us for a few minutes well, over here? Well, we understand uh, camera, okay. audio, and visual. That's, That's fine. That's fine. My That's name's fine. Kerrigan. Tim. Tim? That's Tim. Tim. Rodney Keister. Kerrigan. Tim. Drew. This is Drew. Drew. Julian. Drew. Drew and Julian. Okay. All right. All right. So you're probably aware that there's uh, a policy about uh, vendors coming to campus and doing their whole thing. It's not about the message. It's not about um, stifling freedoms or anything like that. There's just a process to go through. Um, so in order to satisfy that process, you need to apply. It's not really apply. I don't even think there's a uh, cost or anything involved. It's just about um, more notification so that uh, people like me and others can determine whether or not there's going to be any sort of security risk and that way could have more folks to help uh, protect you folks and, and other people and all that type of stuff. So it's all about notification. It's not about anything more than that. Um, this is the department that you would need to get in touch with in order to uh, do that sort of thing from, you know, tomorrow, future, whatever. Um, group, it could be, and they'll, they'll tell you good places to set up and that sort of thing there's um some restriction around you know how close we get to academic buildings things like that because classes going on sure. academic buildings classes yeah. going on 
um, that sort of thing. So, but generally, a lot, there's a lot of green space, a lot of open space that yeah. um, can be available for that. So, but because there isn't a permit in place, and uh, under the under the guidance of our university council, our lawyers, I'm asking you to uh, go ahead and leave campus okay. and reapply, please. And we're happy to have you. Just we have to have everybody f follow those sort of guidelines, or else it becomes somewhat chaotic. You know what I mean? From from a, a planning standpoint and that type of thing. Can I share something? Sure. Okay. First of all, I want you to know, as police officers, I respect you. And I'm very pro police. You guys have been so proud over the years. And I want you to know that I respect you. And I hope you don't feel that what I share is disrespectful. That's not good. Like I said, oh, you, you mentioned that we were vendors. Well, I, I use it as a general term. For people, you as citizens. People that, um, people that come to campus that are, are looking to approach students or, you know, that sort of thing, that's a general term. I'm sorry, it yeah. doesn't mean that you're selling anything. Right? Yeah, sure. So we, we have um, free speech rights to be here on public property. You do. Uh, if you're telling us that we're going to be trespassed or arrested, then I'm going to leave. But if I'm not violating the law that I can be trespassed or arrested, then I, I, I have, I'm really being harassed. Well, our, 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 our council has advised that the, the policy that the university has called the uh, facilities use policy. I don't have a copy on me, but you're free to Google it. USM. They've quoted it several times. For sure. Staff sure. So if you if you read that over, there's a policy that's in place where it falls constitutionally or whatever. It's really not in my purview. Yeah. Um, our, our council has advised that it is permissible. And so sure. we're just following that policy that the campus has. So yeah. like I said, so, so my, my question is, is if we continue to exercise free speech, are we going to be trespassed or going to be arrested? Not because of the speech and not because of the message. It's because of the, of the procedure on how we got here. So. Okay. So, so the answer to that question is what? If I continue to exercise free speech today, Am I going to be trespassed, cited, or, or uh, arrested? If if you don't leave and re and apply and those those sorts yes, of sir. things, then yes, yes. The, then unfortunately the, the the repercussion would be an arrest for trespass. We would trespass, and if you still s stayed, then then it would be that way. I don't want to do that because well, and I, I don't want, that I, to I want you to be welcome to come back. You know what I mean? So I don't want to put those barriers in place. So and I don't mind giving my information, but I travel. I go to campuses all across the nation. This is not just, a, this is my full time occupation. This is what I do. I'm a campus minister, I'm an inner city minister. Uh, we talked with your, uh, the Portland police right here on this campus, and they told us we have free speech rights to be. They, they weren't so, aware of our policy on the, on the policy, campus. And, and I know you're going to stay yeah. and you do, but, but your policy does not outweigh the U.S. Constitution. Yeah. This is publicly funded and private, uh, public property. I, I, you know, so I, right I get where you're coming that. from, but yeah. I have to live within the confines of, of that and what our council tells us. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm only acting as an agent of the yes, university sir. and of their council. And so they're saying that that policy is, is cool with them constitutionally. And so we're going to say you're doing your job, sir. And, 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 um, and because you're because you're threatening that. We're gonna, we're gonna leave because we're not interested in getting arrested. I, I, I'm not threatening, I, I wanna just, it's information. Well, I may ask the wrong I mean? word because, to get used, but I mean. I don't wanna get to the point where I have to trespass Well, well you, you have let us know that if we continue to exercise free speech, that we will be trespassed. That's like, what I mean by that, yeah. Like you said, it's not based on that, it's based on a policy violation. So even if it, it wasn't. But that policy that you, is free speech that we're violating. But in terms of campus speakers, so it's a campus yeah. speaker policy, if we violate it, another We're not policy. a scheduled speaker on this campus. We're here doing free speech as U.S. citizens. Yeah, just, we're, I, we're not even part of the same organization. I, I, I hear you. Yeah. You know, so I mean, we understand what you're saying. So, so obviously, you know, our position is that your policy infringes on our constitutional rights. You understand that. We don't need to go down the road again. But exactly. we're going to leave now because we don't want to get arrested. But it, 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 you understand exactly. that our position is that you're, you're infringing on our freedom of speech. I, it, not you particularly. I know you're doing your job, but the university. I, and so, you know, we've we've dealt with lawsuits. We don't want that. We've dealt with sure. lawsuits before, and there might be one coming. Sure. I'm just letting you know. I, I mean, um, no, so the all. university's, it, it two, the university's general counsel is the system-wide, uh, the state no, I understand. general counsel yeah, I understand, for, for university. Her name yeah. is Nina Lavoie, yeah. um, all online, all that stuff. So I mean, our, our lawyers will be will figure it out and be in contact. Absolutely, sure. absolutely. But uh, Thank again, you, my, Appreciate my, my, my wish here is not to n not have you be able to come back through the front, whatever channels or whatever yeah. you want to do, all that stuff. But yes, if I trespass you, then that kind of puts a big bar there. We go down this road. It's going to take a long time. But I don't we will do be that. trespassed no, if we stay. So, so yes. we're, we're under the threat of trespass. Well, uh, the you warning. Uh, I appreciate your cooperation, your peacefulness, and uh, I, I, I like do I want said, to. Uh, it, it's not. It's not the message. It's not. Well, I don't think that's true, sir. But uh, that's fine. To be faithful, you know, we talk about courts.
serious note. That's more serious than any police officer, more serious than any president of the land. Today, three officers at this university stood against the word of God being shared on this campus. So I just want to let you know that I love you and I want to see you in heaven. So I just want to be clear. It's not about the message and, and I think I that your message is respectable and I think that that's probably the message that, you, that you've been preaching. This is purely about process, that sort of thing. And that's just a process I don't have any control over. It just it yes, comes sir. down from above. So, right. um, but I, I just. I think you made yourself clear enough. Sure. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Tim. So we've been threatened with uh, trespass if we don't leave. What's that? We've been threatened with trespass if we don't leave. It's their policy. I, so I just want to let you know. Thank you for your honesty and well, for standing for truth. Yeah. No have a good day, sir. Thank you.